understand surfactant in this video. So in order to understand surfactant, we need to also know what's the meaning of this alveolar surface tension. The alveoli is lined by the water molecules and the alveoli is also having air. So this air and water interface is going to create strong attractive forces between the water molecules. So when the water molecules are having a very strong attractive force, what happens is that creates a high surface tension on the surface of the alveoli. Now because of the high surface tension, the alveoli would collapse. Okay, this is what is going to happen and this is what is called as alveolar surface tension. Okay, because of the air and water interface there, there occurs a strong attractive force between the water molecules because of which there is a high surface tension on the surface of the alveoli that leads to alveolar collapse. But this is not going to happen in a normal person. And in, we also need to understand one very important law which is called as the Laplace law in order to understand the functions of the surfactant in a spherical or then like an alveoli, the Laplace law is P is equal to 2T divided by R, where T is nothing but the surface tension and R is the radius of the alveoli. Now, as I have already told you, because of this water and air interface, there is an increased surface tension. So this surface tension is going to increase. And now when the surface tension increases, what happens to the alveoli? The alveoli will collapse. So what is going to happen to the radius? The radius is going to decrease. So a decrease in the radius and an increase in the surface tension is going to increase the pressure inside the alveoli. So when the pressure inside the alveoli increases it takes a lot of effort for this alveoli to expand again that means the work of breathing is also going to increase and if the work of breathing is unable to increase the alveoli size or the diameter then the alveoli is going to collapse so this is what happens because of an increase in the surface tension as already explained the law of Laplace it's a in a spherical structure like alveoli p is equal to 2t divided by R where P is the distending pressure, T is the surface tension and R is the radius of the alveoli. But what happens in the lungs is with the reduction of the radius, the radius is reducing, what happens there is also reduction of the surface tension. So what is happening to the pressure? The pressure is maintained. So what is it which is reducing the surface tension? There is a surface tension lowering agent which is called as surfactant. So let's understand regarding the surfactant. So first let's understand the source and secretion of the surfactant very quickly. It is secreted from type 2 alveolar epithelial cells also called as type 2 pneumocytes also called as granular pneumocytes. That means there is one more variety of pneumocytes which are called as type 1 pneumocyte and the type 1 pneumocyte what's their function? They help in diffusion of gases and remember that this type 2 pneumocyte they constitute 10 percentage of the total pneumocytes which are lining the alveoli. So in the type 2 pneumocytes our surfactant is stored in bodies which are called as lamellar bodies and the surfactant is transported out by means of exocytosis onto the alveolar surface. So this is the source and secretion. Next coming to the composition of the surfactant majority of the surfactant is formed by phospholipids and in this there is one very important phospholipid which is called as dipalmitoyl phosphatidylcholine second is phosphatidylglycerol third other phospholipids which constitute 10 percent 13 percent are neutral lipids eight percent are proteins like spa spb spc and spd and remaining two percent are carbohydrates so this is the composition of surfactant don't forget this dipalmitoyl palmitoyl phosphatidylcholine Okay. Now, how does the surfactant take? The basic action of surfactant is because of the phospholipids and these phospholipids have got two parts, a hydrophilic part and a hydrophobic part. The hydrophilic part gets embedded in the water molecules and the hydrophobic part is the one which is facing towards the alveolar lumen. So these tails, what you are seeing, those are the one which are the hydrophobic part. And this hydrophobic part, which is oriented towards the air, it has one twelfth to one half of the surface tension of the pure water. So that means what is happening? It is helping in reducing the surface tension on the surface of the alveoli. So the most important is this hydrophobic part. Coming to the actions of the surfactant, usually we only remember one action that it is helping in the reduction of the surface tension in the alveoli of course it is reduced so how much is the reduction so when we take the surface tension of pure water okay of the pure water the surface tension is somewhere 72 dynes per centimeter okay but when we take the surface tension of the fluids which are lining the alveoli okay which line the alveoli without surfactant present in them then the surface tension comes to 50 dynes per centimeter but the same fluids okay which line the alveoli okay but they have surfactant with surfactant what is going to happen the surface tension comes down to 50 to 30 dynes per centimeter so almost from 50 dynes there is a reduction 
to 5 dynes. So that's a massive reduction. So the most important action that we should write is it is helping in reducing the surface tension in the alveoli. If you have time and if the marks given is more, you can also add this. Now, because of the reduction in the surface tension in the alveoli, surfactant also is reducing the tendency of the alveoli to collapse. So it is not allowing the alveoli to collapse. We know the reason why. That is because of the Laplace law. Because the alveoli is not collapsing completely, especially during expiration, this is also redu reducing the work of breathing. Work of breathing is also less. One more very important function which we tend to forget is it also helps in reduction of the pulmonary edema. Now let's understand how is it helping in reduction of the pulmonary edema. So let's say this is the alveoli and the alveoli is surrounded by the pulmonary capillary with the blood in it and the liquid part of the blood is called as the plasma. So when there is a high surface tension, the alveoli is collapsing. So there is a massive force which is generated towards the center like this. Okay. Now because of this, what happens is the interstitial fluid pressure is also going to reduce. So when the interstitial fluid pressure reduces, it is going to pull the fluid from the blood into the interstitial spaces as well as into the alveoli. So because of the reduction in the surface tension, surfactant is also helping in prevention of the pulmonary edema, a very important function. I don't want you to forget. Then there is one more function which is called as alveolar stabilization. So let's understand what do we mean by alveolar stabilization. Now, oh, in the lungs, there are alveoli of different diameter. Few alveoli are smaller, few alveoli are larger. Now let's say what will happen to such alveoli without surfactant so alveoli 1 and alveoli 2 they are having now equal surface tension why because there is no surfactant now what will happen to this smaller alveoli the smaller alveoli so let's say this is p is equal to 2t divided by r so there is no change in the surface tension but what is the radius the radius of the smaller alveoli is smaller so if the radius is small what will happen to the pressure the pressure inside the smaller alveoli will be more now, because the pressure is more, the smaller alveoli keeps on collapsing and when it is collapsing, it is transferring whatever air it has into the larger alveoli. Now, in the larger alveoli is also P is equal to 2T by R and the ten surface tension is not changing, but the radius is bigger. Because the radius is bigger, what is happening to the pressure? The pressure is lesser compared to the first one. Okay, so first one has got a higher pressure why due to the smaller radius and it is more likely to collapse. This is the one which is more likely to collapse and it is very difficult to inflate it. And once it is collapsed, all the air here is going to enter into the alveoli 2 and the alveoli 2 is going to distend further. So that means the size of the alveoli is not stable. One alveoli is going to collapse and another alveoli is going to distend. Now what is going to happen with the surfactant? Now this is the first alveoli. The radius of this first alveoli is smaller. So if the radius is smaller, what will happen to the concentration of the surfactant? The concentration of the surfactant will be more per unit area. So more is the concentration of the surfactant, more is the reduction in the surface tension. More is the reduction in the surface tension. So the radius is also less and the surface tension is also less. So what is happening to the pressure? The pressure is maintained. The pressure is not going to increase. Now what is going to happen to the second alveoli? In the second alveoli, the radius is more. So if the radius is more, what happens to the concentration of the surfactant per unit area? The concentration of the surfactant per unit area will be also less. So when the concentration of the surfactant per unit area is less, what is going to happen to the surface tension? The surface tension is not going to decrease. Hence here also the pressure or pressure will be maintained. So now what happens is one and two are going to have equal pressures they are going to have equal pressures and the one is going to inflate at a faster rate compared to two so one will inflate at a faster rate so one if inflation is occurring both of them will ultimately have the same size so this is what is meant by alveolar stabilization which is a very very important function of surfactant lastly we shouldn't forget the factors which affect the surfactant so the surfactant is going to decrease when there is long-term inhalation of 100% oxygen, when there is occlusion of the main bronchus, when there is occlusion of the pulmonary artery, it is also going to decrease because of the cigarette smoking. It also decreases when both the vagi are cut off. And there are two important 
factors which increase the surfactant one is the thyroid hormone and the most important is the glucocorticoids which is given in irds which is nothing but infant respiratory distress syndrome okay one of the applied aspects is irds if you want me to make a video on that please tell in the comment section thanks a lot for listening